I know I'd also seen Amy at from the bus <laughs> from the busty bookshelf who that's a different channel <laughs> Hey, it's Sue in the restricted section. Today I'm filming my March book haul because you know I can't go a month without buying some fucking books. <laughs> Just can't do it apparently. I've tried. So let's get into it. I'm sitting very precariously on the edge of my seat, not because I'm excited about something, but because my cat is sleeping on the chair <laughs> and you can't move a sleeping cat. Like, it's not allowed. The first book I have, um, I actually got from Book of the Month. I signed up for Book of the Month, because, mostly because I wanted this book. <laughs> but it is Exit West by Mohsen Hamid. Mohsen Hamid. I don't know if I said that correctly, I apologize. But, um, this is a new book that I've been hearing really great things about, and it's kind of... Uh, has to do with immigration and uh, I think refugees because it's about a couple who live in a very war torn area and um, there are these doors that when you enter the door you go to a different place but you don't really know what you're gonna find and so it comes to the point where they kind of have to take a chance and go through one of those doors so it's some magical realism type of stuff but it sounds really good, so I'm pretty excited to read that. I do plan to read it soon. Next, I got a couple of books from Amazon. And the first one is Seed to Harvest by Octavia Butler. This is the entire, I think it's called Pattern Master series. I'm pretty sure, but it's uh, four books in one. It has Wild Seed, Mind of My Mind, Clay's Ark, and Pattern Master. I actually ordered this by accident. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but I meant to order Parable of the Talents because I already own Parable of the Sower, so I wanted to go ahead and get the other book in that series, but somehow I accidentally ordered this one instead, which is fine because I want to read this too. But yeah, that's how I ended up with this. So this series is about a female demigod in Africa, um, the demigod of nurture and fertility, and she mates with a powerful and destructive male entity and they create this uh, race of madmen, visionaries, and psychics. And they come together in a telepathic pattern um, just as Earth is consumed by a cosmic invasion. And so now um, these be beings are battling to rule the world. And it, so that sounds pretty fucking cool to me. <laughs> and I'm sure it'll be great because it's Octavia Butler. Like, need I say more? And then uh, I went ahead and ordered Parable of the Talents <laughs> because this is the book I meant to get in the first place. Um, yeah, and this is the second book in the Earthseed uh, series. I There's only two books in the series, I believe. I guess I won't say what this particular book is about because of, you know, spoilers, but the first book I know is about a sort of um, like environmental apocalypse like the earth we've we've you know depleted the earth or something along those lines and a girl who's trying to survive in the the ruined world uh, then I went to the DAV or I think it's called the Red Racks now whatever thrift store and got a couple books I was a little disappointed in their book selection they usually have more than that but I found a couple and the first one is the circle by Dave Eggers. This is one I've been hearing a lot about lately because I think there's a movie coming out. And this is about a woman who goes to work for a company called The Circle, which is a very powerful, or the world's most powerful internet company. And she thinks this is the opportunity of a lifetime, but then when she starts working there, um, some she has some strange encounter with a, a colleague, and then her role with the company starts to become very public. And I think this is uh, really relevant to our current world because it has to do with privacy and, um, you know, corporate ownership of data, which is, you know, definitely something that is relevant now. I mean, you always hear about Facebook collecting information on people and things like that, so. Uh, this I just thought this one would be interesting. 
And then I got this one, which I'm a little iffy about, but it's The Memory Keeper's Daughter by Kim Edwards. And I've seen a lot of good things about this, and I've seen a lot of bad things about this, so I'm not sure how I'll feel about it. Um, but it's about a doctor, and he ends up having to deliver his own twin babies, and one of the twins has Down syndrome, and he decides to have that twin uh, institutionalized. And he asks his nurse, Caroline, to take the baby girl who has Down syndrome to, you know, to the institution, but then Caroline instead decides to keep the baby and raise her as her own. Down syndrome is, a, is a something that's very close to me, and so it's kind of something that could go very well or it could go very badly, so uh, we'll see. I've heard some people say that they thought this book was absolutely beautiful and wonderful, and I've heard some people say that they thought it was offensive. So I thought I'd give it a shot, though, and, you know, see what happens. And then, of course, I made a book outlet purchase because I just have no control when it comes to book outlet for some reason. I just need, I need to just block book outlet from my computer so that I can't <laughs> go on there. But here are the books I got from there. The first one is The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. This is a collection of short stories that I believe are all connected by this Russian painting, like an obscure Russian painting, and I've just heard fantastic things about this and about his other book, which I already have and plan to read soon, which is A Constellation of Vita Phenom Vital Phenomena. So I just want to read his books because I've heard so many fantastic things about them. The next one I have is The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. I actually just pulled this out of my TBR jar as my April uh, pick, so I will hopefully be reading this in April. <laughs> I say hopefully because I've historically been failing pretty hard at finishing my TBR jar picks in the month that I'm supposed to, but this one's pretty short, so maybe I can handle it. Uh, but this is about a couple of kids who are mutants, and uh, it says they're trying to conceal this fact from the their other from the their village elders, and then they have to make a choice of whether to wait until this is discovered or to flee. I think it'll be pretty good. I think I'll like it, but I just thought this copy was really pretty. <laughs> it was partly why I got it, to be honest with you, but like I said, I think I'll like it and I wanted to read it too. The next is one that I've heard a lot about on booktube and that is Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon? Shannon? McGuire? Shannon? I'm not sure how to say that. But I believe this is about, it's like a school where children go who have been to magical lands like Narnia and Wonderland, places like that. They get sent to the school with other children where they sort of try to learn to cope with the real world again. But I think there's some sort of mystery involved in this book, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, it's extremely short, and I've heard mostly really great things about it, so that sounds like it'll be a, a cool book to read. And then next, um, I got this on the recommendation from uh, Michael from Knowledge Lost, and that is At the Existentialist Cafe by Sarah Bakewell. And I believe this is just about existentialism, and it's kind of a a bit of an inter introductory look at it. So I wanted to give that a shot, maybe uh, read it before I read some of the more philosophical novels that I have on my shelves so that I can maybe understand them a little bit better. And I'll uh, link the video where Michael was talking about this book down below. Um, it's about his journey with philosophy and, and reading philosophical works, and I thought it was just really fascinating and interesting, so um, you should check that out if you haven't. I'd seen Amy at From the Dusty Bookshelf talk about this book on her channel as well. I thought when she talked about it, I, I thought it sounded really interesting too, but um, Michael kind of pushed me over the edge on, on actually <laughs> actually going and buying it. And also, I was also hesitant to buy this because it was actually pretty expensive. For some reason, on Book Outlet, this was still like 10 or 11 dollars which is really high for book outlets, so I don't know why it was still so expensive, but maybe I should have checked somewhere else. I didn't even think to. I was just like, I'll get this here, so maybe it was cheaper somewhere else. 
Alright, and then the last book I have, um, I, someone recommended this to me on Goodreads, and it is The Black Count by Tom Reese, and this is uh, Glory, Revolution, Betrayal, and the Real Count of Monte Cristo. So this is about Alexander Dumas's uh, father, is his father or his grandfather? Yes, it's his father. Alexander Dumas's father inspired the events in The Count of Monte Cristo and Three Musketeers. So I thought that would be really interesting. I've read both of those books and really loved both of them. I want to read more books by Alexander Dumas because I just really enjoyed those two. Those are the only ones I've read so far, but I really enjoyed those and I thought it would be really interesting to read more about the actual inspiration for those books. What is that noise? So that was all the books that I bought in March. I'm still sitting on the edge of this chair even though my cat has since moved, so I should just scoot back. Come here, Lily. Come here, Lily. Oh, hello, Lily. Hello. He thinks his name is Lily, too. In fact, he responds better to Lily than he does to his own name because he doesn't want her to get any of the attention. <laughs> he's also getting groomed Saturday because he's a hairy little monster. Alright, so um, if you guys have read any of these books, let me know. Did you like them? Did you not? And there'll be links below where you can find myself and Megan other places on the internet. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.